Good morning. Welcome to this week's Table Talk. I'm Sandy. I have with me today Robin and Nana. And we are excited to have you with us today. We are going to be talking later on about all things embroidery. So, but we'll get started with what you all have been working on. Let's start with you, Robin. All right. So I have been working on this cute quilt and um, obviously I haven't got it all together, but these are, there's four different blocks. There you go, Vanna White. If you'd hold that up for us. Right. So there's four different main blocks. Love this blue which, that's around. Them. It's so fun. And yeah. I had to be careful because these are directional. Oh. But it's been taking me a little bit longer because this is the cute sashing. And then a square oh. cow's in between. Snowballing so there. it's going to be, yeah. So it's just been taking me a little bit longer. Oh, because, yeah, you got the. <clears throat> and then a square stars. goes right there. Yeah. So oh. I'm excited because yeah. I think it'll be super cute. Yep. So I've been. This line. Do you want me to grab went the so fabric? Fast. It went it's so beautiful. fast. Okay. Yeah. Like, we've already sold out of so many bolts of this collection. So. It's just Crazy. a little bit but, different. Mm -hmm. It's like a little muted. Yep. You know, and it has the pretty. It's kind of like it has bunnies in it. I know. Oh, <laughs> they're my word, so I did not realize that. that. They're little yeah, bunnies. They're, they're oh, they are. They're done in a way that you don't necessarily see the bunny, but they have bunnies oh, in it. I had very year round that. bunny. They are. Because yeah, then not there's even bunny. in here. See this? They're just a yellow. woodland. Yeah, just cute. Just cute. Yeah. So pretty. Little cute. And this is elegance. Yes. Is the collection as well, right? Yes. So you will have kits for this beauty. I think the kits are ready. Oh, they're okay. faster than I so well that's easier to cut kits than to sew the quilt that is for sure <laughs> and then I'm beautiful working on this cute little cross stitch and I love it because look at this color look at the pink it's like and my this favorite is strawberry house beautiful look at this thread oh and how pretty what color is that it's called ladybug, ladybug. but look how pretty it is that's what the house is out of. Classic and color works, huh? So I got all excited. Just this, I have it's only beautiful. stitched twice. Yeah. And it just stitches fast. So look at that variegation. Oh my I gosh, know. that's a yeah, it really is a really pretty thread. Yeah. So, you know, that Yay. might be what sold me on it. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And Anna. I guess it's me. Yeah, <laughs> it's you. What have you okay, been I'll doing? Show that later. Well, I've been working on, we got mm -hmm. the late October by Sweetwater, mm -hmm. and we picked dun -dun. Yes. Oh, Ohio Girl Quilt from the Oh Happy Day book, and it's this oh. quilt. And I've been working on the blocks of it, and Ooh, they are like, so cute. Oh, they're adorable. Mm. And I was worried about the direction of uh -huh. fabric the, for the hourglass, uh -huh. but I you stitch them out the same way, and, and when they, you and they turn the opposite, you get yeah. two of this way and two this way, so it and turns it out works perfect. perfectly. So you just kind of need to watch when you put your in placement, your, but yeah. not your mm -hmm. not your sewing or cutting. It's just they turn yeah. out that way. So they're kind of cute, and then oh. like you send oh. a picture, you sash them. Oh. And look how cute. there's gonna be some flashing in between them too, but it's, Ooh, it's like, gonna be pretty. I know. I'm it's excited. Be pretty. Yeah. It's, I love this it, this yeah. texture that's on that. I know. Surrounding it's, the blocks. That's I know really it's gonna cute. be cute. Yeah. So and that's from Oh Happy, Happy Day. Day. Which this is a fairly new book, isn't it? I I think this came out not too long ago. Yeah, it's yeah, it's newer. Yeah. But, so yeah. Yay. And then that's my kind of Halloween, just so you know. yeah. There is yeah, because you can use it. You can use it too. through fall. Yeah. yeah. I finally finished this one. Autumn, autumn, autumn. No, it's just oh. autumn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's last year fabrics or the year before. I don't know when they came up with this. Last year, I think. But you just have pumpkins. And somebody the other, we had a customer on Monday. Oh. And she was kind of like oh, this. <laughs> Drawing Anna's blocks. That's okay. And she didn't quite like, are those pumpkins? They don't quite look like pumpkins to me, but you know, it's they're like, pumpkins. yeah, they're pumpkins. But then I thought like, well, if you don't want to have a pumpkin, you can totally, you know, instead of a pumpkin, keep the square. Yeah. 
and just kind of you know mm -hmm. no, switch it a bit and not put your stems on or something yeah not yeah. put your stems and you can totally do it with not being pumpkins but, but why wouldn't you want yeah. these cute yeah but buffalo chip like, pumpkins <laughs> but yeah. it was a fun one to make and the um, plot is just a piece of fabric so you don't need to be stressing about yeah. piecing, piecing your pumpkins in. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cute. So the stars take a little bit of piecing, but they're the same coloring. So if mm -hmm. you chain piece, they go pretty quickly. Yeah. So it was a fun one to do, and it's kind of a different coloring, uh -huh. but bright I like and that cheery with it yeah. and the gray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have those kits here for you. Love but that yeah, that's so what I've been working on. Yeah, we decided so, to do that last fall at the end of fall. Yes. And so we were like, okay, well, let's just put that aside. Just, so we put it aside for the shirt. Yeah. So, so cool. And yeah, I think you show the stitcher now or later. If but this week we started the Sound of the Tree, the Turkey and Me with our block one, which is the pieces here. Mm. And so... People had started receiving their kits, those that are in the mail, and those that are green store pickup. And we have a few spots left in this still. So we're excited to get going on that. I love it, little applique. So. Yeah. And this is an easy one for me this year because it's already stitched up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, right. last time I was like, keep it, trying to keep it going, keeping on track with it, but I yeah. actually finished, so. Anyway, that's funny. It's a fun one. Beautiful. Can we show your um, hilltop? Oh, yes. This will be the roll hilltop next week. October. I can okay. grab it. I think I, think I, so I understand. This is the new October hilltop. And it comes with all the ribbons and everything and those that are in the club. Of course, that club is sold out, but the patterns will be available um, mid-October. No, mid-September. Yes. The pattern alone is available for purchase. Um, right now, the kits are shipping today. So cool. by the time this airs, they should be in your little hands. Mm -hmm. So I love you put those little kits the on the bottom. And yeah. the tombstones. The and, little you know. bottom roll. Your I'm mind so is cute. just so creative. Oh, and you, you keep coming and up with saw, stuff. But I was like, you know how I do when I'm supposed to be doing something and I do something else instead? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yes. Cleaning your room while you should be, like, studying for the test. <laughs> right? So, I should have been doing something that I... And I started um, designing little princesses. Oh, so... Oh, and you didn't see the Mary Poppins I did. No. Oh. You know, I did the... It's a small world. Right. I had so fun. Just so much fun with those little people. <laughs> so, I started doing all the Disney princesses. So I've got oh, Little Mermaid, and I've got Sleeping Beauty. Oh, Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> I've got a uh, Belle. Fun. Belle. Um, Tangled. What you know? I know a few Little people that were freaking out over that. Um, and Mary Poppins. Oh my goodness! I think she turned out cute. She's my favorite. <laughs> Will you be I releasing these things? things? Yeah, I got to figure out what to do with it. But mm. oh my I gosh, the little princesses are. I mean, I'm gonna still keep going, but anyway. Oh. So Anna came up the other day, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, um, what I'm not supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> and we oh, good. Go yes. away. Walk away. You didn't see me playing on the computer. <laughs> hey, you were the I boss. You can do whatever. I am right. not judging. As long as Kathy doesn't see, you're yeah. good. See, my computer faces me. She doesn't. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't know what's as going on. As long as she doesn't know you're She doesn't good. know what's happening <laughs> up my side of the desk. <laughs> Yeah, it's good that way. Yeah, I figure you're good as yeah. long as she doesn't see it. Well, and actually, I really wasn't working on it when she. I had opened it and was looking at it, but I'd done it the night before while I was watching yeah. TV. Because I, you know, anyway. <laughs> That's funny. It's like a good feeling. Oh. Just look at your design and be like, mm. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. that's kind of cute again. <laughs> I'll just do the work on that some more. But so then while I was up there and I had it open, I did do the Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. She has a little bag and an umbrella. I need to come oh check up my on you more often. So right? Yeah. Just to see what <laughs> yeah, she's bringing up. Because you oh, have we're so, going into the so busy crazy. season. We're so going crazy. into the witches. Yeah. Witches go up on September 17th. 17th. Oh, they'll be up. Go up. That's the day okay. that they're in the village all up by the Wowzers. 17th. They'll start a few days oh. ahead. But Hold on. And then we all know what happens then. And Great. Keep your arms and legs inside and have fun. Exactly. <laughs> it lasts until the whole October, right? Yep. Oh, but 
it starts the, end of the 17th of September. It all begins. People There's, will start coming yeah. as soon as the witches are up. And then it goes through October 31st. It's a I mean, fun excitement, you know? <laughs> yeah. Everybody gets excited. Yeah. Did it start this early last year? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yep. I thought yep. it was a month, but then like... They, the like witches night out and those type of things don't start till in October. Uh -huh. But the witch displays go up always the mid September. Oh, there okay. is so much involved in setting up the displays and getting all that going that they wanted to extend it a little longer because people oh, gives people more opportunity to come and see them. And so. that's true. And it's fun. Yeah. And if you're, um, I shouldn't say this, but if you're yeah. crowd phobic and you just want to come see the witches on a Sunday afternoon, is a good time. To just come wander the village. Oh, oh the yeah, village the village isn't open. Yeah, okay. the village mm -hmm. isn't open. The activities aren't going on. You can't shop in the stores. But if you know, you like the display. If you just want to see the displays and be a, a little, little, Sunday little stroll. Sunday stroll. That's a good mm -hmm. time to do it. But anyway, we're excited. Okay, Emerald. What are we talking about today? We're talking about embroidery. Okay. We are going to have at the end of this video we will have a question for you to answer and we will be doing a giveaway another what, giveaway another giveaway and what we're giving away is the kit to do the pumpkin pie pin cushion that's so cute and so it has all the fabrics the rick rack the wool button and the pattern to do this embroidery project. And all you're doing really to create these wedges, you're making a pinwheel block. It's super simple. Um, and the fabrics are in there, the instructions are in there for creating that. I'm also giving you an embroidery hoop to work it, a friction pen, which we'll go over this when we demonstrate the stitches, mm. um, that you can trace your design onto your fabrics, and my favorite embroidery needle. So we'll give a pack of those. Oh. So all of this will be given away at the end of the video, we will have a question for you. Answer the question in the comments, and then the next week we will announce the winner. So that's that should be fun. Anyway, but let's show a little bit of our embroidery project, shall we? So this okay. is one that I designed <laughs> a few years ago. I, I was. Um, can I start? Yes. Because so you start. I'll start and finish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're done. You I love it. It. Okay. <laughs> Get it out of the way. So I don't like do extensive embroidery, <laughs> but I enjoy it. And I have done a couple others, but I've given them away. This is a pattern that, I don't know, I just love the colors mm -hmm. and the message is pretty awesome. I actually gonna keep everything, but change the cure word. Mm -hmm. And then I found my, that my mom, she got diagnosed with breast cancer. So I'm like, well, maybe she doesn't know English, but like maybe I'll finish it. Yeah. So I kept the cure. But what I kind of want to show for this, it's like they, this, the whole pattern, it's stitched just with the back stitch. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to practice all sorts of different stitches. So I pretty much. Oops, upside down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Our hope is standing on its head. So I just, um, I think my back stitch is only like. Oh yeah, and those circles uh -huh. and a couple others, but I switch every stitch, and you can see mm -hmm. I traced the original flower, mm -hmm. but then I just did. Is that the daisy stitch or that's I don't a know. satin stitch? Satin stitch. Yeah. Okay, so I I just kind of went and, and when I came to yeah, yeah, I did this here. I love that. And that, like they did French knots in the middle of it, but I kind of did. Yeah. I don't even know the name of the stitches. I just Google searched them when I got to uh -huh. that point. It's like, hmm, what I'm gonna do here? Chain stitch for and that. And I yeah. like did oh, the yeah. parts like darting or whatever. It's what I do don't you know. call that stitch? Like you have different. I think it's kind of like it. darting. It's wo oh. woven. I don't know uh, what they're uh -huh. called. I just, but you know, just because the pattern is simple, you mm -hmm. can take it and make it your own and just. I don't know. I enjoyed finding different things yeah. to stitch. I love, it. love it. So yeah, that's for me. So you can take it as simple or, <laughs> or take it yep. up a notch. Yeah. Yep. It's up, it's up to you. Both ways are. Yeah, I both think they're pretty, pretty cute. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Yep. But, awesome. Hey. <laughs> <Sorry>. Hey, girl. 
What you got? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Me and embroidery, we're not friends. And yeah. I want to be friends with embroidery because I think it's beautiful. Okay. I've even taken a couple classes, but I like, oh, I let my head. That's ugly. Unpick it. It's oh, not even. No, it's not. So last night, look. Okay, so this is my peaceful day. Yep. That, you know, I've done. And I, I just get in my head. It's mm -hmm. so dumb. So, like, I feel like that one's really cute. It is cute. But then last night I was looking at this, and so I unpicked my broom because my stitches I didn't like. Yeah. So oh, I overthink it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I get going on it, and I do it, and then I think, oh, that doesn't look very good. But, like, look, I have them all ready to go. Yes. You just do. I dress me. But do I know what you mean, because I worked on an embroidery last night, a new pattern we had come in. Mm -hmm. And I did it, and I'm like, I like the way that looks. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I felt like my my straight line was going like this. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I was like, eh, I'm not showing that. That's and awful. now I really want to see how it looked before you unpicked it. Oh, yeah, no. don't you wish I'd taken a picture? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's probably not bad. Beautiful. I know, so, it's so fat. cute. You yeah. know, but I love... Done is perfect. Yeah, so... But I love wool because it hides. It's hot. I love mm. wool. It <laughs> hides. Yeah. So you don't see that I'm uneven stitching. Well, so my works. goal is uh -huh. with our thing that we're starting with the sundown stitchers mm -hmm. is my goal this year is to like get good at embroidery. I mm. think that that gives me, I think I'm going to work on this during sundown stitchers. Right? Because I'm, I've got quite a few blocks done, but I want to get them. Like I have done. a lot so of and that maybe is what I'll work on. You know, it's from I that book. It would be fun. Yeah, yeah, this book, Annie Down's book. It's it's so there's all kinds cute. of projects in here, but it makes where's the quilt itself shown? Is it in the front? I can't remember where it is. Might be. Yeah, yeah. it ends up. It's hard to see how cute it is on this, but you could, it's really cute on it Instagram. It's really fun. <laughs> I looked at yeah, it because doing, I was like, yeah, it's so cute. I just started yeah. doing, you had collected some mm -hmm. low volumes, yeah. and yeah. so I started so where, collecting some of them. Yeah, so where this is all white on her quilt here, we're doing more low volume, so it's got some... Because yeah, she had a couple so blocks cute. done, and I was yeah. like, oh, see? I love them. And that's what happens. People show me things, and then I'm all, oh, my gosh. So here's like, what BJ showed you. BJ on Saturday, I should never work with her because <laughs> I love to work with her, and she's such a bad influence. She's like, have you heard about the tiny treasures? And I'm like, nope. Well, guess what she showed me? <laughs> and look at this yes, thing. So cute. Like it's beautiful. And it's tiny. It, it's <laughs> so tiny. But the best thing is oh, you use these yeah. and you don't have to like there's something about not having to take the strands apart. Like mm, to me it's like strand. it's a get yeah. up and go. Yep. So I have my Through We nice. have a few threads that are missing, yep. but I've collected the beauties. Yep. And I hey, got I my ordered fabric. Them in, so we're just waiting for a few colors but we got everything we could at the time so so i thought between that and the other two i'm like you got some down stitcher projects right i'm gonna <laughs> be like years yes <laughs> and years and years because yes. then you know me and i'll be like you'll be seeing something i want to cross stitch yeah so i don't have to think so anyway. if anybody's wondering what sundown stitchers are that is on the second friday of every month um friday six to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. here in the store. You just bring your handwork. We are going to sit together and just learn from each other and enjoy our company and hopefully make stitch. lots of friends yeah. and yeah. just learn from each other and it'll be fun. It'll be the same Friday we air this. So, so that'll be, that will okay. be the same week. Awesome. So, the first one is September 9th. I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Um, Okay, what yeah, was I going to show? Oh, okay. Oh, Sorry. yeah. I so I'm doing, <laughs> so this is a simple, I usually stitch with two ply floss. This one is stitched with six strands of floss. So it's big stitches and it has some different, and then you can go to our YouTube channel to find out how to do the, do the embroidery hoop yeah. fabric covered. Is it, do you have to use a different needle for all six strands? Just a bigger, a bigger embroidery needle. Mm. Anything that you can get your six ply floss. I go the smallest I can that I can still get my six ply through. But I've got a couple other ones for Halloween that we have in. This one is, I think this one's all backstitch. This is all backstitch and a running stitch. 
all that's used on that. And I believe that's the same on this one. This one is called <laughs> Spooky. I can't remember. I will find it. Emerald will put the name of this pattern on. This is all, it's all about the boots by um, All My Bloom and Threads, which is the same yep. designer as the one you showed. Mm -hmm. We have new patterns that just arrived that are um, some fun new embroidery by Kathy Schmitz, which is the one that Robin showed. There's also a new Christmas one um, that's little ornaments and also mm. a new Christmas red work quilt from Kathy Schmitz. So, um, and then just showing that you can add embroidery stitches, decorative stitches onto your wool projects, um, into your quilts. We have the little mini quilt. Where's the little mini quilt that I showed before? I don't know if you don't have oh. that. From Make It Mini, which is a really fun book because it has small quilt projects that all have a little touch of embroidery in them because Flamingo Toes does um, quite a bit of embroidery. I so. almost brought my uh, a quilt I made for my daughter, mm -hmm. and it was a sampler I did at American Quilting, their Saturday sampler. Mm -hmm. So there's some embroidery in the front, but then on the back I decided she was in kindergarten or right before she went to kindergarten, and I'm like, oh, for the back I'll have her like write her oh. name on, like, I think she wrote it on paper and then I traced it. But it was kind of disappointing because her handwriting was good. Oh. So it doesn't quite look like as a young <laughs> child. Yeah, oh darn child but had good I penmanship. Have, yeah, I have her name on the back of the quilt em oh, embroidered. Cute. And it's That's like, fun. yeah, but still yeah. kind of special to me. But yeah, we had my mom write. So she always said to us, remember who you are. Mm -hmm. And so we, my sister one year for Christmas gave us all of these silver bracelets that had in my mom's handwriting, remember who you are. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Oh, and that's... then two of my sisters, no, my sister and a niece just had in my mom's handwriting, remember who you are tattooed on their arms in my mom's pen. You know? That's so, awesome. That's really that, that's So awesome. that's fun to add that personal, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and touch to it. That's and, a great thing. Yeah, my and I always said. used to say when she'd say it to my nephews or whatever, I'd say, "Remember who Grandma thinks you are." <laughs> <laughs> so. yep. Sometimes, yep. yep. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we are going to demonstrate some embroidery stitches. But what else were you going to talk about, Emerald? So can we walk through a little bit of how different? Is there any difference I should know between stitching on fabric mm -hmm. and? clothing because like you st you embroidery on hats yep, clothing. I've seen it on jeans they're probably a different feel is there anything um probably just depends on like if you were stitching on denim you would probably be using three strands versus on your white fabrics you can use two ply even single strand embroidery but on a clothing piece you're probably gonna have to use I think more strands just to have it show visible yeah. and so that it's and visible last. yeah and so <laughs> that it would last would you put a stabilizer of some kind behind i probably would okay. but but if it was denim and the denim's pretty heavy right. anyway right then no yeah. because but you're not going to see your stitches on the but just shirt or yeah. making sure yeah. your knots are good you know you've got a good knot because it's if it's going to be washed and stuff it'll if you're doing it on a shirt I'd probably pre-wash my shirt so that it didn't shrink up oh and then it's all different like than the floss you know what I mean okay mm -hmm. um but as far as the stitches go I don't think there's much of a difference mm -hmm. um, sometimes depending on the hat like my hat that I stitched on I couldn't use a hoop but mm. the fabric was so heavy I didn't really feel like I yeah. needed a hoop mm -hmm. um and I probably wouldn't start that to be my first project because uh, you have um, out the book from the article of quotes mm -hmm. to hold on. So you probably need to be somewhat familiar before yeah. because it won't be like holding a piece of fabric. Yeah. But I mean, at the end, we, you can all unpick it, right? At the yeah. end, you can always unpick it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> yes. I learned from Robin. Yeah, my daughter was Don't showing even have to wait to the end. That's right. <laughs> my daughter was showing me a pair of jeans that had flowers coming out of the pocket. 
and oh, she's like, cute. "Mom, I want to do this." Like, oh yeah, my daughter wants to. Oh, <laughs> just made me smile. So because we're talking about that, I see a lot of people using the wash away paper. Is that yeah. really necessary on clothing? It's or? not necessary, but you can't trace through.、Mm-hmm. So you're either gonna freehand. Draw your design on the piece of clothing,、mm-hmm. oh, no. or you're going to use the that wash away stabilizer because then your pattern's on. You can trace or probably print it's, on it. I mean, you can print on it, you can trace on it, and then stick it to your article of clothing. It gives you a little bit of body as well.、Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's on the blue rack there,、um, and then the design's there. You're not having to wing it.、Uh, you know. Yeah, that stick and stitch. So this is the product. So you could either you can run this through your copier because they're just eight and a half by eleven sheets,、um, and then once it's printed, you just cut out just outside the design area, and then peel off the one side, and then it's sticky and it just sticks to that piece of clothing. Oh.、Nice. So if you're doing hats or anything and you don't want to just freehand it, it's a great product because you can just stitch it.、Yeah. You know, stick it on there. So,、okay. so hang on, and we're going to show you some of the stitches. Emerald, why don't you tell me which ones you want me to to show? Okay, let's start with some simple ones. Yeah, let's、um, start with the basics. So, what's running stitch? Running stitch. Okay, so a running stitch is just. I'm going to draw a line so you can kind of see where I'm. Okay.、Uh-huh. So if I was going to do a running stitch on that line, I would come up at the end where I want to start, and you're just going in and out. It's just creating that. Think of a dashed line. Oh. Now, right now, I am using a pearl cotton just for ease to show you. This is a one, single strand that Robin was showing you.、Um, So this is a Valdani pearl cotton variegated. So that's what thread I'm using. The biggest tip I can give you for doing embroidery, as well as in doing cross stitch, whether you're using two ply floss or six ply, you need to separate your strands, one strand out, all six strands, and then put them back together. So they are flat. They so are that it takes the twist、separate. out of the floss, and your stitches will lay nicer.、Um, it'll make a big difference in how you're. Projects look so. Running stitch is just that; it's in and out, and you can do all on the surface, or you can do the stab method where you go down. That way, you can get even more even stitches if you're But, silly like me. Anyway, you can see I went off my thread here. But anyway, see, she does better. I do better. Yeah. Than me,、uh, yeah. But back stitch, I do better if I'm not doing it all on the surface.、Mm. Anyway, so that is a simple running stitch, and then doesn't get much more simple than that. So the second one, let's go to back stitch. Okay, so back stitch, we'll do that to the side here. Oh, and this is a friction pan. So this pan line will disappear either with friction, like I can erase it here with the end of my pen there because it created friction, or an iron will. Um, cause it to disappear. So, where this is the start of my line, and I'm going to draw here so you can see what I'm talking about. Where this is the start, I don't want to go just to that line. I'm going to come out a little bit, and you'll have to forgive my stitches, but I'm trying to do this so that you can see. But, and I'm going to go back, hence a back stitch. Okay. Now I'm going to come out, however far. Or however long you want your stitches to be, BJ's are so、oh, tiny, so tiny. that they are almost invisible. invisible. The、beautiful. fact that it's a stitch, yeah, yeah.、Um, and then I'm just going back in that same hole that I came out, and I'm just meeting up those stitches. You don't want any of your fabric to show between, and so I'm just meeting up that stitch. Creating a solid、nice. line. Now, some people, it, it depends on how you learned embroidery, and some people do a stem stitch for a back stitch. I've done that before,、oh. so, so that you don't see my because you don't see where they join. You yeah, don't see it. 
and it looks like it's still braided. So and that is a back way, stitch. It's kind of, to me, Can it's kind easier. Of mm -hmm. back to so, show. Uh-huh. That's, I think, why. So, so the back. Yeah. The back looks almost like a stem stitch. Yeah, yeah. it ends up looking yeah. like a stem <laughs> stitch. <laughs> but sometimes you don't want to switch your stem stitch for the back stitch because yeah. you want it to show. So to when I'm. Show that, that, like your yeah. stem stitch oh, okay, like yeah. is more More 3D. dimensional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing tiny, like, letters, like you're type you're stitching a word mm -hmm. and okay so let me show you for instance on this mm -hmm. gather i don't know if that's showing yeah um if i tried to do a stem stitch for those letters mm -hmm. they would just look a mess mm -hmm. um and so when you're making those tiny curves and such it's it's better to do it's just your back precise. stitch yeah it's more precise so and that back stitch again is used here you can see it pretty good in that smoke of the above the pie or the steam of the pie but okay so I have a question for yeah. you yeah because when I started embroidering uh -huh. I was told to use the micron pen the super fine to trace uh-huh so and I love is, the micron the brown is yes the brown yeah so show me the piece of fabric that so the micron pen is a permanent pen and if you're going to use the Micron Pigma pens, which are a permanent ink, I would always recommend using the brown versus black. Mm -hmm. This brown just covers. Mm -hmm. You don't see it. And sometimes mm -hmm. when you use the black, I see, feel like you can see. Like, you know, but that it covered that. It just covers up. Your stitches cover up that black. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the brown stitch drawing. Because, see, I'm, I'm silly with the Micron or with the friction uh -huh. pen. Because I take my stuff with me everywhere. Like we go to Bear Lake and right. I take it and I'm in hot but car. That's what yeah. I want to say. Would it disappear? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. you know? I was going to say, you don't want to leave that in your in hot your, car. Yeah. Right? Because don't leave your pen in your hot car either. Because, <laughs> that, sometimes, yeah. because sometimes I've had a hard time getting them to work again. Yeah, they that would dry out. Smile. Yeah. You have to close them. But, yeah. um, but, but you don't want, once you spend hours and hours tracing, and you then don't go want to, to work on it and there's nothing there. But... <laughs> Not an emergency, because you can always throw it in your freezer. You can always throw your stitching in the freezer, and it will reappear. Really? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Oh, so okay. until you wash it. Yeah, yeah. So. And then can I have you another. Finish the other half part with stem stitch. Okay, so, so let's do a stem stitch. Okay. Show. So my stem stitch, I'm gonna start right where I want my line to start where here I started in a little bit and then went back. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna start just right at the tip of my, where I wanna go. And I always keep my thread to one side mm -hmm. or the yeah. other. You don't go back and forth, don't go back and forth. And I take, I go out and go back towards where I started. And then again, I lay my thread to the side and like I take said. a stitch back to where it started. Now see why I like that stitch? Because you can't see exactly how big or small your stitches are. Yeah. I have a more. question. And it's kind of a ropey mm -hmm. appearance to yeah. it. So like when you have a curve, do you uh, yes. like try to have your thread uh, to the side like of the curve? Do you to the inside or the outside? Yeah. I believe I do, and I always, I always have to test it. Yeah. I believe I do my thread always to the outside of the curve. Okay. I, I think that's what I do. Yeah. I was just wondering if yeah. there is really like... And if you're doing a curve, if you can keep your stem stitches, you don't want them to be really long, just especially in mm -hmm. a curve. Just... Mm -hmm. Whoops. So it creates a, a nice stem for your flower or... But yeah, Anna, you did beautiful stem stitches on your well, work. Here I can, I don't know if you can see, but like I think Let's here see. I switch my, how my thread goes so you can see a bit bigger mm -hmm. stitch. So, because I wanted to go with the curve, but having started it that way. Oh, but and you then can you see, see that this one yeah. beautiful yeah. ropey. And look. I think here in the R, it's, mm -hmm. I probably could have gone smaller so you don't see mm -hmm. this right is here yeah. but but it's okay it's, it's learning though. process yep. And, yep. absolutely so. <laughs> so that's the difference between a back stitch and a stem stitch 
Okay, so now what are we gonna look at? Okay, satin stitch. Satin, satin stitch. Yeah. Okay, now this is how I do my satin stitch, which may be different than how others do it. Some people will just start their satin stitch. I find mine look better if I first outline in a back stitch the area that I'm gonna be satin stitching. Oh. So I'll outline my shape. So you can see the shape with the outline. Like you, can you don't see the, you won't see this because my um, satin stitch is gonna go on the outside of that line. Oh, it oh. kind of will create a little bit more but puffiness. It, and, and it creates an, an edge. I just get a sharper. Well, it gives you a more defined edge. A more defined edge, yeah. yeah. And then you're not gonna see your pen Yep. Also, mm -hmm. especially. But I get that, that, yeah, more defined yeah. edge. So then um, let's say I have this all the way outlined. Let me get about halfway so I can show you. Yeah. Now, this satin stitch may not look as lovely as when I do it with floss because I am using a pearl cotton. I don't know if I've ever done a satin stitch, so we'll see how it works out. Now, a satin stitch on the front. So I like to start, if I was doing a circle, I like to start in the middle mm -hmm. and then go out to the yeah. one side and then go back and go out to the other side. So let's say that I was going, so I'm coming on the outside of my stitch and I'm just going right across on the other side of my stitch. Now. I don't want to try and save floss and come up there. I've always got to start where you start kind of where you know back and, okay. back and forth. So it'll look the same on the front. So it's going to be yeah, the back won't necessarily be as pretty. Right. But um and I'm just coming up just to the side mm -hmm. of where my last stitch was. If I can get that. Normally this would be on my lap, not away from me. Right. And I'm just going on the outside of that line that I created. I'm gonna have to try that because. And I find that mine just turn out nicer. Because I always hate filling in the satin stitch. Well, mm -hmm. I think never... it, that uh, 3D effect, it's mm -hmm. better because it leaves the edges uh -huh. too. It doesn't make them flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like And that. you don't get kind of a. Because you get uneven. You, you get yeah. an uneven. Yes, that's look what I to don't it, like. About where and you're covering up that back stitch. Right. So there is the satin <laughs> stitch, which they are side by side, and your back is gonna look mm -hmm. like a satin stitch. It should not be your threads going here, and then you're gonna go this direction, and then you're gonna go this direction. You're gonna be going a continuous yeah. around. Yeah. You're looping all the way around. So you have the satin stitch on the front and the back. Don't try and conserve floss by. Well, you're not going to conserve that yeah. much floss. So. And how often are you going to really use your full skin? You know, mm -hmm. it takes a little mm -hmm. time sometimes. So yeah, I hadn't done it with a pearl cotton, so that's not too bad. Oh. But um, you will just get that nice rounded look by back stitching the area first. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. Nice. And then, so something similar is long and short stitch, I guess. Okay. Like when you're doing that, do you do it in different colors? Because I'm trying to, like... I, okay, so on some flowers I've seen where... Like, let's say this was a petal of a big flower. I've got this big flower here. Mm -hmm. I've seen where they would do... They might do longer, shorter. And then on this, they'd have, like, a darker color. This might yeah. be the outside of the petal. And then they do... So they're not... Just have They're going more. long and short, so your stitches aren't a satin stitch because sometimes it's only that long of mm -hmm. a stitch, and sometimes, you know, and they're just uneven, some long, some short. Is it giving the more natural? Yeah, look? a more instead of your petal being mm -hmm. all the same. This side is going to be dark, and this side's going to be light. It's more of a natural okay. look to it. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to learn. Yeah. Um. Can we show a little bit of French knot and lazy daisy? Yes. So French knot is, I come up 
<laughs> and I will wrap my needle, let's say two times, okay? And then put my needle right next to where I began. I don't wanna go in the same hole because I don't want my knot to pull through. And then the key for me is to slide my knot down next to the fabric. I don't want it up here on the needle. And I just hold it with my thumb and pull. So coming up, wrap my needle how many ever times. And sometimes the patterns will be specific to tell you wrap your needle once, wrap it twice, whatever. Right. Um, but it just depends on how big of a knot you want. If you slide that thread down right next to the fabric, instead of leaving it up here on your needle, if you just tug that down next to the fabric, you won't get the little dog ears. Um, because that like was taught a different way, where you okay. hold the needle down at the bottom and then twist it. it I like this so, so much better. So that is a French knot. I like and then daisy stitch. And a daisy stitch, once you do a daisy stitch, then a chain stitch is just natural from that. So mm -hmm. we'll show you. So here I've come up, and if I want to make a petal, then I will go down again where I just came up and take a stitch however long I want that petal to be. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be coming. I've got my thread looped, and it needs to come inside that loop. So I hold the petal and it creates that petal. Now, if I pull too tight, What's it changed? my oh. petal flattens out. Okay, so you don't wanna to pull too tight because that's the whole idea is to get a nice petal. And then you just, on the other side of that loop, you just take a little tacking stitch and That just down. secures it. Mm -hmm. That just secures it. But, and so you could do then your one next to it leave it a little bit more open there so giving it a little less tension and it creates that nice petal okay mm -hmm. now if I'm gonna do a chain stitch which I love chain stitch mm -hmm. I'll use chain stitch to fill in an area mm -hmm. um, to outline an area so again I'm making that lazy daisy and then so I pull through and like, I'm just gonna then make my next lazy daisy. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tack it down. You're not gonna my petal, I'm just gonna go inside the petal, take my next stitch and pull through. I love the 3D look of that. Mm -hmm. I do too. Not so much. And so I'm just continuing on. that and then when you're done at the end of wherever you wanted to finish you'll just tack that down now I've got oh, you using six strands here that's what I outlined my pumpkin shape with is as is, is a chain stitch it looks so different on different strands uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah so that's there and then in this one I think I yeah it's hard to see but instead of filling this with a satin stitch, I did a chain stitch around and around and around until it was all filled in. Mm, and then this is beautiful. your satin. And then that is the satin stitch. And again, on these wings and the little body there, I outlined it first and then just Which went then over. Which then it looks like it looks so smooth. Yeah, in I think it's that outlining it first. That's a makes good a trick. Difference. So I decided to fill in with the chain stitch on this flower, and then this one I decided to fill it with French knots. Ooh. So I back stitched the shape, and then I just filled it all with a bunch of French knots for the center. Nice. So, um, but yeah, chain stitch is a fun one to do. Okay. And then, so the last one I saw is woven wheel. Okay, I never woven wheel. Really heard of and this, this is the one people. It's so fun to do. So here's my flower, and I'm just gonna do a small one, okay? And you need to have five spokes. So it can be called a woven wheel, a wagon wheel. It just needs to have an une uneven number of spokes that you're gonna do. Okay. 
And so you're gonna start by stitching just those, the spokes of your wheel. And sometimes they will leave a hole in the center instead of your spokes going all the way to the center because they'll fill that with French knots or something, but I'm just gonna show you this basic. So there we go. There is the start of it. Now I will come up just inside one of those little wedges with my thread. Now I'm going to be weaving. So I'm gonna go over this arm of my wheel and under that one. Mm -hmm and then oh. over and under, over. So I'm gonna go under this one. So because it's an uneven number of stitches, every time I go around it, last time it would have been I'd gone under that stitch, this time I would have gone over. And so I just continue around and around and you're gonna continue this until you no longer see those spokes. When you're done with your flower, this um, is how it looks like? yeah, so this is, you when don't you see think. the spokes any longer. Yeah. Okay, because I've gone around and around until it's all filled in and it just creates this little woven rose that is really fun. And especially if you, if you're using a variegated, now this blue isn't that uh, variegated, but like that pink, Mm -hmm. floss that Robin was using in her cross stitch would be so gorgeous right? because you would see that um, and there's so many cute variegated mm -hmm. you could use it for everything like yeah. pumpkins or your spring or your whatever so I'm just going to continue and go around and around and eventually right now it looks like kind of like a turtle because <laughs> it's got but that nothing shell wrong with that. nothing wrong with a turtle <laughs> right no, we love turtles wrong. we like turtles we're not anti-turtle So, yep. And so then I just go down and that is the rose. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see it now. Cute. So, anyway. And then, so on that flower, if I wanted to create a leaf, the um, daisy stitch can be used for your petals of your leaves as well. So I could do, obviously it would be a different color but I could take my, and do a little leaf here. Oh, yes. Maybe do a double leaf here. I love embroidery for the fact of the creativity that you mm -hmm. can add to it personally. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody can, can do the it. same yep. thing, but then how you do your stitches or what stitch you choose if you want to change your back mm -hmm. stitch to the stem or whatever. So maybe I'd add a little stem there, stem stitch coming off of this. So you could just... Create a little... little rose. A little single rose. So, Cute. anyway, that's kind of it. Okay. okay, so our question for this week's giveaway is? So the question is, which stitches are most challenging for you? So if you do embroidery, tell us what stitch is most challenging for you to work on. Or and just... again, we'll be giving away the kit for the pumpkin pie pin cushion and all the little hoop tools. and set of needles and all of that. So post your question and or post the answer to our question and we will have a giveaway. So thank you for joining us for Table Talk and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.